So, hello, I'm Joel Berger. I'm going to introduce myself more properly in a second, but this is writing a chat application in less than 50 readable lines. That title came a little bit because I am the one Perl guy at the Chicago View JS meetup, and every time I mention Perl, I have to go, but you can read it. I, I swear, it's read. Yeah. So about this talk, as always, I tell you about my talk before I tell you the talk. I first gave this at the Chicago VJS meetup uh, a few months ago, and I last updated it today. Of course, this slide is really nice because it'll be online, and you'll want to know when was this last updated. Uh, you can follow along, and there's some code in it, so if you'd like to follow along, please go ahead. I'm actually serving it straight from this. I'm not even using it from my local host. Uh, jburger.github.io slash viewchat. Uh, the source is also on my GitHub. The live demos, because it's a chat application, there are live interactive demos. If you want to participate, that's demo.jburger.pl. Uh, it is all SSL'd, so, you know, we're in this building on shared Wi-Fi, but it's cool. Uh, all the code samples, as in all my talks, are complete and in the repository and run as shown, so you can play with them at your leisure. And this talk is, of course, a Mojalicious app, too. I want to thank my employer, Server Central, for sending me here. We do server hosting and things. If you're interested in that, please talk to me, talk to us. About me, I have a PhD in physics, um, but I don't do that anymore, so I work at Server Central. This slide kind of was because of the Vue.js. I'm that guy that loves Perl, but you guys are too. Uh, I'm also that guy that loves Postgres. There are a few other ways to do this, but I'm going to demonstrate it using Postgres. And I'm learning to tolerate JavaScript, and Vue.js is part of that uh, reason for me. So uh, I am on the core of Mojalicious, so if you have any other questions about Mojalicious, please ask. So let's make a chat client. It's fun because chat clients demonstrate a lot of different technologies all at the same time. WebSockets. Um, you know, the transport with a server push from your uh, back end. Of course, you need a server, so I'm going to use Mojalicious. It makes this nice and easy. Uh, we're going to use a front-end client framework because it's the new thing to do, and uh, Vue.js makes it pretty nice. I'm also going to show you why you need a message broker when you're doing a chat client, and most people will skip that step in a talk of this size, but I'm not going to. We're going to keep the client small. And we're going to do that because I want you to be able to see how the tools interact with each other. And I'm going to use experimental signatures because I want to keep it small. We're going to start it a little bit simply and build it up. The intentions of this talk. We're going to make a minimal working code. It's not maybe always the best code. I don't check errors and things. But this is to show you how the components interact, not how you'd write prod code. Most of you guys probably know Mojalicious more than the Vue.js Meetup did, but you know it's a web framework and it's based on the knowledge we got from Catalyst, but new and shinier, uh, with some nice built-in features. These uh, are our updated stats as of about an hour ago. Eight thousand seven hundred eleven lines of code, uh, eleven thousand five hundred twelve tests, and ninety-four percent test coverage. And you can get help at the various places. So this is a chat example that I wrote um, probably getting close to five-ish years ago. And it has kind of pop propagated around the community for the different brokers to use as their different examples of how to do a chat client. It is a little longer than the slide allows, but not a whole lot. And I'm going to break it down a bit. This is the key backend bit. This is the, uh, the, the WebSocket side. So after we set a timeout, because the default timeout of 15 seconds makes for a bad chat client. All we're going to do is we're going to take the controller that we get when you first request the route. Um, and if you don't use Mojalicious, you can just think of this as the connection. Um, we're going to put it into a big hash of connections, and we're going to index that hash by the memory address of the connection itself. It's a cheap and easy way to do that. And we're going to uh, react whenever the WebSocket gets a message. And we're going to send that message out to all of the subscribers, or just iterate over the values of that hash. And then when the connection closes, it'll emit this finish event, and we remove it from the subscribed connections. This is the really ugly one, and that's because I'm showing you the original, because this is the one you'll see in all of the examples 
in the Mojalicious community. We just wanted the least amount of JavaScript that would show your message, and that's this. And it's ugly, but meh, it works. In my bigger Mojalicious talk, every slide that shows Mojalicious code then follows with test code. I'm not going to do that in this talk because it's a 20-minute talk. But just one time I'll show you. We can test the WebSocket by connecting to the WebSocket, by sending a message, by waiting for a message, getting that relayed message, because all this is doing is a relay. And then we close the, message, the, the WebSocket, and we do done testing. Testing your WebSockets is as easy as this. Please have fun. You can test these things now. But if that was all I needed to do, then I wouldn't have much of a talk, right? So this is where we get to play a little bit. I'm sure you can believe that that first demo worked. But I'm going to uh, ex mojo basic chat free fork. So I have just started a pre-forking chat server uh, and demo.jburger.pl. And all you get is a little box here. And I can say hi. And if any of you guys want to say hi, go ahead. Hello. So someone said hello. People are saying stuff. Is anyone not seeing their message? Because some people's are working. Oh, we got a few. Yep. Some people are not seeing. Now, do you see each other's messages? Yeah. We've got a problem here. Not all of them. We've got a problem here. The thing I did where I just took all those connections and I stuck them in a hash only works if you have a one process server. It's the cheap way you'll see most people demonstrate this stuff. But you have to be hitting the same literal process. And no one does that in a production server. You've got a pre-forking server. You might even have a farm of servers. So this is not going to work. So how can we deal with that? This is the demonstration of what I just showed you. If I had run the first example, you would have all worked the first time. This is the, the example you just saw. We have multiple servers, in this case just multiple processes, and some of them are on the same process, so those guys can talk to each other. But those processes don't talk to each other, so you have these siloed chats. And the way you fix that is you put another level up here that these servers can now all talk to. And that's your message broker. Plenty of things can act as a message broker. Uh, in the Mojalicious world, we have three of them kind of readily available for you. There's a Postgres, there's a Redis, and there's even one that's another Mojalicious app with WebSockets that it would talk to. That's called Mercury. It's um, Doug's thing, so you can look at that. Um, I'm going to use Postgres because I like Postgres, and I'm using it already. Uh, many of you probably know about Postgres. The world's most advanced open source database has lots of, lots of nice features like native JSON types and a message broker. So let's add a Postgres based message broker. This is that code you saw before. And we're just going to change it a little bit. We're going to have this connection to Mojo PG. So you have a Postgres. You'll see that most of the rest of this looks like you remember it from before. Let me scroll past those couple lines that are the same. We're still going to connect to the message event from the connection. But this time, rather than just send it out to all of our clients, we're going to connect to the Mojo PG pub sub instance and notify. Uh, this is a topic, so you can pick whatever you want for that topic name. If you had multiple channels on your chat, you could pick multiple channels somehow. Right now, we're just going to call it Mojo Chat, and everyone gets Mojo Chat. We now make a callback that gets listened for uh, when the Postgres broker sends us a message, our, our client, our server instance, a message. And once again, we still have to have a finished behavior. This time, it's unsubscribing from the message broker. It's really almost no more lines. And I'm sure if I. I could demo that if people want, but I promise you, it'll work then. So, OK, that fixes the back end. But the front end was ugly. So let's use a front end framework. 
Why? Because I don't want to have to poke the DOM myself anymore. I don't want to have to use jQuery or, you know, the native um, JavaScript uh, DOM methods are getting better. But, you know, it's a lot to do. So let's start using a front-end framework. And that gives you components that are composable and reusable uh, and gives us separation of concerns. I like Vue.js. Uh, it's a really shallow learning curve. It's unobtrusive, so you can actually use it as in just a small part of an already existing app, as opposed to some of the other Angulars and things that want to take over your entire app right away. Uh, the DOM binding is really automatic. I don't have to think about this. This is a do what I mean, and we are pro programmers, and we like do what I mean. And oh, importantly, it has great documentation. Uh, so let's substitute Vue.js. This was our original, and yeah, okay, it was sort of intentionally ugly, but here's the new one. Let's skip the loading line. You can just include it as a library. You don't need to build it with build tools. That's a nice thing for us, like, you know, just trying to like JavaScript people. We have, uh, okay, I didn't split this slide up because I was going kind of fast. Uh, we make a, a WebSocket as before. But this time, we're going to make this view instance. And we're going to have a couple bits of data, the current message I'm typing, an array of all the messages. When a message comes in, all I have to do is push it onto the array of messages. And if I send a message, I grab the current message, and I send it, and then I remove it from the buffer. But now, rather than that hackery, which I didn't show you, but if you want to look at it, it's evil, I have a form element that has an on submit handler that calls send. And I have a log that says for m in messages, put the message there. So the separation of concerns now is much better. We can say, just loop over an array and give me all the messages, rather than having to poke them in each time something shows up. But now we've got some more power. So we can add a feature. Maybe you want to have usernames. Now, this thing doesn't really validate usernames. You could have username collisions. It's just, I'm going to pick a username from the front end. And so now that one looks like this. So I can be Joel, and I can say hi. And if people refresh, they won't see that one yet, but they can say hi and all these things. Now, we didn't have to make any changes on the back end because it was just a WebSocket relay. So even though it's now, oh, I didn't show you what I'm doing. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I've added a new field up here, just this modeled username. So that's a sort of a two-way binding. I type it in there, but it can also, and whatever, that's, you'll learn that pretty quickly from the documentation. But all I'm really doing is now I'm taking that data, I'm making JSON of it, and sending the JSON over the WebSocket. We didn't have to change the back end at all because the back end was just a relay. But interestingly, if you wanted to, you could parse out that JSON on the back end. Maybe you'd route it to a particular channel or keep records of how that had all flown. Um, so finally, this is the entire script that you just saw. Yes, we've gone through it pretty quickly, but it does all the things I told you it would, and now you have the code to look at if you want to use any of these technologies. And that's 47 lines. Now, that isn't to say I've Perl golfed this to be 47 lines. That's not my point. When you see nearly any of these technologies shown off, you get them one at a time, and you get them spread over a bunch of files, especially if you're talking about front-end frameworks. They'll show you 15 files you need before you can get started, and it's so confusing that you can't really get started that way. That's all this is meant for you to do, is look, how did you get this first little bit to work? And from there, you can build out. So hopefully, that will help you. So that's the end of my basic talk. And I've got five minutes left. So I'll take a couple quick questions. And if I make it, I have a little more about Vue. 
Does anyone have questions at this point? No. Yes? What else can you tell us about Vue? What else can I tell you about Vue? Uh, Bonus slides, because um, I never know quite how long it's going to go. Um, this isn't really how you use Vue. Vue instances, the outer instance of like your main application is, isn't really where all your logic should go. You should make Vue components. And most of the frameworks work this way. So the thing that displayed the message was just a bit of the inline template. But you can make a little component. And that component we'll call chat-message. And that's going to be like a tag that we'll put in the, the template later. That way we can structure how the individual message is going to look independently from the rest of the app. And we can even put in some required things like, is a username required? Is a message required? Maybe you're going to have some other things come later, like status. You know, is the person online? That might not be required, but it, you know, things like that. Now you don't have to deal with your main application when you do that. Chat entry can work the same way. We can have our template here. Uh, we can have some data, like the current state. And now you'll notice, because this component is going to be deeper in the application, it has, has to talk back to the main application to say, I've sent, you know, the, the user has hit enter in the box and I would like to send a message. And now the parent instance can subscribe to that. So this is back out in the main, uh, the main template. And Yeah, OK. So this should have been, I only updated this once. Oops. I will fix this before too long. I only used the chat entry bit. But here's the chat entry bit. No, that's right. Because username I didn't do a thing for. Yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> so this was the entry bit. And you notice that I subscribe at message to the send method that we had before. And the chat message is where basically the 4M in messages goes. But you'll see this time I bind username is that and message is that. And now we can let that individual component format it for us because we don't care. And this is now our base application. And I've even moved the WebSocket into the main uh, application rather than having it sit outside the application. That was just to demonstrate that you can do that too. I don't really need to talk about that. But you'll notice the send method is still exactly the same. It was just subscribed to on the chat entry event, message event. So now that gets called at the same time. And finally, here's that entire script componentized. So you can see I've loaded these two components. They get used here and here, here. And that builds up the application in a componentized way. Again, not really production quality code, but you can see how you're supposed to use components to build these things up, and now those are separated. And that's really my end. Again, don't memorize any of this. Don't feel like you have to know exactly what I said. The code is all there. Go look at that there when you're ready. Cheers.